Now let us continue with this victorious crusade against these worthless mutts, mutants, and their enabling owners. So I was on Dog Free a little while ago, Crusader headquarters, and read a few stories I wanted to talk about some things. The owners of the Husky that was responsible for biting that boy's arm off a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, was turned over to animal control. But they said they will not euthanize the dogs. I think they took in two dogs. And I don't understand why. ABC News reported that the owners were notified that they were going to be cited for two counts of possession of dangerous animals and two counts of public nuisance animals. Perfect example of how flawed these dog laws are. All dogs are a public nuisance. I, what are they talking about? Barking is a nuisance. There are piles of shit everywhere. It's a nuisance. They only classify dogs as dangerous after they've attacked somebody. What kind of sense does that make? Based on that logic, let's put lions and tigers in 80% of American homes. You can't classify them as dangerous until they attack someone. That's the exact same logic. What kind of sense does that make? In regard to large dogs, they're all dangerous. Based on the current protocol, they should all be surrendered, just like these huskies were. All of these dogs are dangerous creatures, keeping them in society, especially in homes where kids live is child endangerment. When you look at the most well-known toys that have been pulled because of child endangerment, the contradiction is obvious. Jarts, those little metal darts, responsible, it says, for a whopping 7,000 injuries and at least one death says these lethal toys were banned on December 19, 1988 by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. What a joke. 7,000. Over how many years? Was that from one year? Even if it was one year, which I don't think it was, that is pathetic. I remember those things. I was almost stuck by one of those things. 7,000 injuries. Compared to what? Just emergency room visit visits for kids is half a million. And this is every single year. This is not over five or ten years. That is hypocrisy. Sky dancers. These were flying toys that caused 100 injuries and got recalled after 100 injuries. Slap bracelets, also known as slap wraps. Some of you might remember these things. Popular in the late 80s, early 90s. They were banned in several schools after reports of injuries. You think these compare to dog attacks? Who, who believes that? I'll assume the number of injuries were far fewer than a half a million requiring emergency care treatment. Now, when you talk about dog bites in general, you're talking about millions upon millions. At the very least, two and a half million each year. There's no comparison. Clackers, those acrylic balls attached to a string banned in 1985. Yo-yo water balls banned after only 409 injuries. None of these toys compare to the danger that dogs present. Not even close. Not even remotely. 
Millions of kids bitten each year. None of these toys come close to a million injuries. None of them come close to a half a million in the ER. It is very irresponsible to not call attention to the contradiction. It is criminal to project dogs in a positive way whatsoever. Even more criminal to project dogs as if they are custom made for kids. When dogs attack kids most often. As I was creating this video, I saw an ad about sleep deprivation. And of course, these weirdos put a mutt at the center of the article with what looks like a child. And as you can see, only the dog's face is visible. Because whenever these people see images of kids with dogs, their emotions are invested in the dog, not the child. That's the highlight for them. So the owner of that husky that bit the boy's arm off did not want to speak on camera. But he told ABC News that Polar and Bear, the names of the two dogs, provided emotional support for his wife and daughter. Right? How pathetic is that? Ridiculous. I've talked about this pathetic emotional support nonsense. Now he felt pressured by the county to give up the dogs. He didn't want to, in other words. Bit a boy's arm. This is how immoral these people are. These people are absolutely crazy. Sociopaths don't give a damn about nobody. These are psychos. Felt pressured to give them up? Why didn't you want to give them up is the question. Protect yourself from these crazy ass people. These are the type of people that own these deadly creatures. He added that the Huskies had never hurt anyone before. We hear that every time. After every dog attack, we hear that same nonsense. The director of the Davis County Animal Care and Control said, quote, the dogs, in our opinion, aren't necessarily vicious. They seem to be pretty decent dogs, end quote. Right? He also said they've been decent with our staff, and that's one of the reasons we're looking to deal with a relocation rather than euthanasia. They want to place these mutts in another family home. Crazy. This is insanity. Are there any kids who are members of your staff, Mr. Davis, director of the county uh, animal control. Are there kids a minute? But keep in mind, in case you forgot, the dog mauled a toddler, not a grown up. In case you're not aware, which you obviously are not, as with most of you dog nuts, you're oblivious to facts. Dogs prefer to attack kids. You can't measure how safe a dog is to live in a home with kids without having any kids around during your assessment. Right? I invite the director of Davis County Animal Care Control to refute that. Do you disagree with that? Put it in video or writing. I will upload it and respond. None of you so-called experts want to talk about this. And for good reason, you have no arguments. This is a victorious crusade. We're not going to run into any resistance. We're going to run right through you. The petition to save that worthless mutt got over 243,000 signatures, all from disgusting, inhumane, subhuman deranged dog nuts.
the boy's family has not done interviews. But on Wednesday, his mother posted a picture of her son on Facebook with a post explaining that his entire right forearm was chewed off five centimeters below his elbow and detailing his long road to recovery, both physically and emotionally. He will never fully recover. He will deal with the irresponsibility of you dog nuts for the rest of his life. This is what you put them at risk for. All because you want these mutts in our society. It is so disgusting, I cannot put it into words. It infuriates me that you people are this inhumane. It is disgusting. Why would you want to put kids at risk like this? Are dogs worth it? Of course it is to you because you're deranged. His missing arm will serve as a reminder of this incident. And it will cause him to live life much differently, physically and emotionally, than he would if he had both his arms. Another child. A four-year-old was attacked by a dog about three days ago. And once again, the child is playing, minding her business. Nobody startled this mutt. Nobody tried to take its food. They didn't even know that mutt was there. It simply spotted the child and attacked. Dog behaviorists are silent. I've challenged a couple of you. Who are very well decorated. I have not heard anything from you. What are you waiting for? For the videos to get a million views? I've emailed you. Personally. Heard nothing in response. I know you've seen this video. Again, I don't have a degree. I'm not an expert. But you know, that's what you fear the most. People who do independent research, because people like that have a genuine passion for what they're talking about. They're not doing it just to get a degree and to pass an exam. None of them are coming out and admitting that dogs are too dangerous to exist in human territory. You hear these idiots on YouTube claiming that dog bites are rare when 50% of all kids in this country will be bitten before their 12th birthday. How is that rare? They compare the number of people bitten to the entire population within only one year. It don't work like that. These Attacks happen year after year. You can't say it's rare when you're only dealing with one year. When at the beginning of the very next year, your ass might be bitten, even though you were not in that year. When you see these idiots, and keep in mind, each biting incident poses the threat of fatality. Yeah, your chances might be small in one year of getting bitten, but your chances grow significantly over the course of 12 years. So when you see these people on YouTube, these mutt lovers saying that dog bites are rare, you know who I'm talking about. Just understand, these people are far beneath your level of understanding. And they are not even worthy of a response. Let them make as many videos about you as they want. As I've said before, you can call it rare or a small percentage all you want. Two and a half million children a year, to me, is a lot of children being bitten, especially out of only 80 million total children. Again, that is only bites that are reported. 
the true number is about seven and a half to nine million children alone out of about 80 million. That is a lot. That's more than many large cities. Half a million that require emergency care treatment is a lot. I don't give a damn what any of you say. That is a lot of children. I don't care what you consider rare or an insignificant percentage. Again, there have been toys that have been banned for injuring far fewer children. The number of commercials that includes dogs is overwhelming. Insurance commercials, automobile commercials, anything you can think of that has nothing to do with dogs at all. These people include dogs in them because they know how many dog nuts there are in this country and they understand that these are deranged people who will purchase a product or shop at a store or purchase insurance all because the company included a mutt in the commercial. As long as the media projects dogs and entertainment, projects dogs in a positive way, people will be obsessed with them because the average person cannot think for themselves. Right? They cannot think objectively or critically. They need others to think for them, to paint a picture of the world for them, to tell them what they should and should not like. But people who can think for themselves have always been here, but we've been silent. But we are no longer sitting in silence. I don't find these killers these mutts, these child maulers in every commercial amusing. It is outright offensive, immoral, disgusting. Creatures that should have been banned long ago for injuring our youth more than any other creature or toy that has ever existed. Being projected as a blessing to kids and a blessing to society. These worthless huskies will have an opportunity to bite more kids arms off because of the irresponsibility of this dog culture. Not even doing a proper assessment on how dangerous the dog is. Judging it based on how it interacts with adults when it bit a toddler's arm off. I am disgusted by the very sight of a mutt, but more so at the sight of its owner, its enabler, who openly wages war on society in full support of continued bloodshed on a daily basis. And it's funny how dog nuts will measure how good a person you are based on whether or not you like dogs. And if you don't like dogs, then they say you're a bad person with an evil spirit. How backwards is that? The same people responsible for millions of maulings telling you that you're immoral if you don't love the creatures that they enable to maul them. But I do the exact same thing in reverse. If I find out you are a mutt lover, it tells me that you have all the negative traits that you accuse people who don't like dogs of having. But unlike you, I can provide irrefutable evidence to back it up. 